All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solutions. Here I'm covering section 1.M, uh, which is on projectile motion. Okay, here's the scenario. A rock is thrown horizontally with a speed V from top of a cliff of height H, as shown as the diagram on the right. So let's just label that. Here's our height, and it is thrown with a velocity V there okay on the diagram choose a layout for a horizontal and vertical origin and label um, your choice for zero zero it can start anywhere but the fact that this is can be height and I want it positive I'm gonna treat this right here as zero zero choose a horizontal and vertical positive direction and label those on the diagram it's always tradition for people to do this right going up and to the right is positive Okay, identify on the equation that can be used to solve for the time. Please understand, solve for time for the rock to hit the ground. Write your equation below. If you're having trouble finding the right equation, refer to your notes or the equation sheet. Okay, so here, um, let's see if I pull it up here. These are your the first three equations, basically, on the formula sheet. Okay, from a f um, first principles points of view, you would like to start here. Understand this is linear in behavior. So this wouldn't, this is not linear. Okay, here this is um, parabola in nature or curve. This is a parabola, I think that's how you spell it. And this is also um, parabola-ish in nature, but there's no time. So this is like, I call this the extra one. Right, so we're going to use something like the second one for sure. Okay, we're going to use this one for sure. So let's just write that out. Right, uh, identify an equation that you can use. You can use this one x is equal to x naught plus velocity in the x direction naught times t plus one half axt squared. All right. We've rearranged the equation so you could write in part B to solve for the time it takes uh, the rock to hit the water. Your, fi your final equation should contain um, given variables and physical constant. H is for your height. That's velocity and any physical context. Okay, so do you see how there's X and X not here? It's not good. All right, so let me bring up paint and we could do it on paint, okay? All right, so I had this equation from the um, from the start. X, let me just zoom in a little bit. X is equal to X naught plus VX zero plus one half AXT. This equation would be good if we are describing the x direction, right? But we want the what? H, which is in the y axis. So let's just rewrite this for the y equation. So this just becomes y is equal to y naught plus v y zero naught plus one half a in the y direction. Uh, there's a t here, right? Shouldn't there be t here? Yeah, t squared. Right, so this is the uh, I would call this like the x direction equation, right? Okay. Sometimes people see this as like the distance for a pro um, distance for a projectile, and people would call this as the um, y direction, or also call as the height. And again, this is for a parabola. Okay. All right, so what is height, okay? We know that this is y naught and up here is y, okay? So we want to subtract this to both sides, right? So you get y minus y naught is equal to the left hand, the right hand side. Understand here, you could make a substitution. Height is defined as final minus initial. So here you could make this height, okay? And um, oh, we know that also a y is equal to g. 
good. So y naught is plus one half g t squared. All right. So now what we can do is, uh, do we treat this as zero? I don't believe. Let's see. If we're allowed to treat it as uh, zero. Is the initial? Is there an initial velocity in this problem? Uh, a rock is throwing with a speed v on top of the cliff. Uh, so here, this goes to zero because this goes to uh, is equal to zero because the vertical velocity is zero because the object was thrown horizontally, okay? So this becomes zero. So you have height is equal to one half gt squared. All right, let's do some more algebra. That becomes two h g t, two h g. That's how you divide it over. Then you get t square root two h g. Okay, so that's how it should look like. T is equal to the square root of 2h over g, but that is the complete deviation, okay? Again, you could pause the video if you would like to see the steps, all right? So there you go. All right, now, next part, uh, part D, okay? Identify the equation that you can use to solve for the horizontal distance. Okay, horizontal distance, and we already talked about this, so let me just bring up paint again, all right, but this time it's just this, okay, all right, so let's just delete all this, because this was for the other one. But you're going to see how the math is the same. So let me just write the equation for you. That's how you should look like, all right? Uh, OK. All right. So it starts here, OK? But again, you are going to uh, subtract the x not over. So you're going to get something like this. X minus X naught is equal to velocity in the X direction, zero plus one half a X T squared. All right. Understand now it's it's not H, right? OK, it is now a we can say uh, we're going to define distance as the final X minus X naught. So this is going to just be D equals to vx naught plus one half a x t squared. Okay. But here is a x equal to g? No, because again that is vertical. Uh, this is called uh, horizontal acceleration. So understand that a x is your horizontal acceleration. And again, is the object accelerating horizontally? No, right? The AX is equal to zero because there's no engine. There's no thrust. No engine, no thrust. So there's nothing causing it. Trust, thrust. Okay. So this becomes zero. So this becomes zero. And everything else remains the same. So D is equal to V naught X. Okay. Uh, T. Sorry, there was a T here. <laughs> Forgot there was a T here. There was a T here. There was a T here. Okay. Sorry about that. I think I also screwed up the other one. Please remember there was a T there. Okay. So all we have to do here is now to find the distance. All right. So do we have a t value? No, because again, it only has to be a function of um, something. So what we have to do is use the answer from part c, right? And the answer from part c was t was equal to 
G2H over G. All right. So distance is equal to velocity in the x direction, not times 2 height over G. All right. So there you go. That's how you find the distance, okay, of the object. And that should answer. That should answer part. Uh, I should have showed the math a little bit here. It shows it right there. Good. But that's the explanation on why. All right. Now, how if all would the equation written in part C and E change if the projectile was thrown from the cliff at an angle above the horizontal? Explain your answer. Right. So the fact that it was thrown an angle above the horizontal, that means certain things could have happened, okay? First of all, let me, um, let me grab these two equations, okay? Hold on. All right, so let's just redo it, okay? L let's just redo it. Um, yeah, so, but now there is a, what? Now there is a um, theta, yep, because there's a horizontal velocity, right? So there is a theta that is involved. So V is going to be equal to, um, V is going to be like a VX plus a VY, right? There's going to be a theta component, okay? So there's going to be a VX and a VY, right? So certain things don't cancel out, right? So let's work uh, this one first, okay? The fact that this doesn't go to zero, okay? This doesn't go to zero. So you would still have to do this. So this was still height is equal to this doesn't, this does not get substituted. Uh, oh, that becomes brutal. So nothing gets canceled. So this doesn't get canceled. Multiply this by 2, you get 2h is equal to 2v0y uh, times t plus uh, gt squared. Then you could rewrite this as 2v0 t. Uh, no, no, hold on. Um, that's a bad way of writing it. You would want to write the, in standard form, let me write this in standard form. I'm going to subtract here, watch this. I'm going to subtract 2h, I'm going to subtract 2h, but I'm just going to write it in standard form now, okay? So this becomes 0, gt squared plus 2v naught yt minus 2h, right? So here you would have to like factor, right, to get the x and the y part, okay? All right? But do you see how things doesn't cancel out? Then once you have the time, like here, do you see this is a function of time? If you don't see it, let me show you. Do you see here, this should look like this. Okay, the, but the, uh, let's, here, let me make it so much better. A and G are the same here, okay. And G are the same here. B, which is I'm going to make green, is the uh, B is right there. And do you know what is also the constant? Uh, it's going to be this. So this is the 2V naught in the Y direction, right? And then the C, which is your constant, because it doesn't change, right? 2h uh, 2h delete 2h notice this is a quadratic equation right do you see how there's factors and you would have to do uh, this doesn't this would even factor out neatly uh, but it's gonna factor out right okay so um, the this question 
is trying to get you to understand that how would the equation change? It's things don't cancel out and things don't go out neatly. Okay. Um, this would also mean that there would be, um, you know, two time parts here that would change. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, also note that the if you look at the next video that the velocity that in which you throw it is also going to increase the speed as well, um, the distance that is going to be thrown. Okay. All right. So uh, but there you go. Those are all your solutions.